Hello. Yeah. I'm doing the one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm from the Botany Lab. This is part of work. Right. And also done with Dr. Chong, Louise, and my prof also. So in recent years, we've been going on various sites, look at education, eat some thoughts. So this is kind of like a combination of of knowledge that we accumulated. <clears throat> um, yeah, so this may have been shown many, many times. Like uh, yeah. So this is a primary presentation. Map. So um, you see that the majority of the land will be covered by the lowland littoral forest, which is uh, also mainly dry land. So dry land meaning uh, parts of lands that are mostly not uh, flooded with water or trout here. So um, this is by Collard, 1992, and from here it's quite clear that you know, he did lots of calculations. And so quite clear that at 1900, most of the primary forests in Singapore were cleared, and subsequently you see a peak or rise of the cultivated land in Singapore. And after that, starts seeing a lot of secondary forests uh, appearing all over Singapore, and you know, there's and the urban development has been quite constant throughout. And what do I mean by secondary forests? Um, they are forests that have been grown from uh, previously destructed land. Um, they, the cause can be uh, man, uh, natural, like wind blown, strong cyclones, or it can be man made, like clearance for agriculture. And they will have different species com uh, composition compared to the original forest. So, in the case of Singapore, it's quite clear, um, we lack dipterocarp carp species in the secondary forest. Um, two major plantations uh, played a key history in shaping what we see nowadays. First is the Gambia plantation. Um, this is a Gambia plant. So it's highly destructive, a very destructive way of uh, cultivation to harvest the tannin from the Gambia. One hectare of Gambia you need about one hectare of uh, timber or firewood. So Gambia is a very destructive way of collecting firewood and uh, clearing the forest. Subsequently, we see the rise of rubber plantations in Singapore, and um, this would be a very important part of milestone, in, like I say, shaping the history. Um, this is what I did by tracing the topographic maps of 1945. Um, you see that jungles are the jungle category is mostly central, uh, uh, centered at the central National Nature Reserve region, as well as Bukit Timah. Um, Although I have to take note that most of these would be secondary forest stand. Majority of Singapore will be covered by plantations, mainly rubber or uh, pine bowl, bowl. And um, the empty spaces were actually like cities or kampong areas that people live in. And this is a current vegetation map. Um, I presented these three years back in at another room. Uh, this was done uh, through satellite uh, remote sensing on spot five images. And uh, based on the four bands, red, blue, green, and infrared, you will be able to know where are the forests. Um, subsequently, um, yeah, and the non agitated areas in detail. And although there's lots of greens, the primary forest is only restricted only at the Central Cashman Nature Reserve and the Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. The rest are all secondary. Uh, the book that my prof uh, contributed in the Natural Heritage of Singapore classified the secondary vegetation into herbaceous vegetation, low secondary forest scrub, and post secondary forest. And we do go out and we go and see um, the different forest patches. We look at this patch, Albizia, you see Divinia here. We look at here, there's a more native style, like Pneumonias or Monocytes, you know, and Rodemias. It makes you wonder what shapes this kind of species composition. And I mean, for what you can expect here is. The land use history actually shaped the kind of species composition that we see nowadays. So, bearing species composition in mind, we try to update the current classification. We propose to have a native dominated forest, which encompasses both low secondary and low secondary, and abandoned land and waste land that are mainly exotic dominated. The native dominated forests are, as I said, mainly centered in the Central Cashman Nature Reserve and Kalukuma Nature Reserve, and some of it, the the Niger Beluga Park can be found in the southern regions. Um, they are regenerated and preserved before 1940. So, if you look at the map that I showed you just now, 
the green parts were what we see now as a uh, secondary forest. So um, in past literature, there are two kinds being uh, uh, described, the low and tall. So the difference are mainly structural. And floristically wise, they are not too different, although they seem to represent a successional region from a lower Makranga base to a more mature base of forest. Uh, yeah, so the lower secondary forest, the, or the younger one, would be Makranga dominated. And we do see some Cetizian, Calphedums, Rhodemnia, and some nutmegs, or even the Cerises, at the later stage of the native dominated forest. Um, just some advertisement. Um, <laughs> my student and I did the three years in committees at my tree. So this is what kind of like, um, give me the idea of what the actually that the species convention really did for a long such a medium. So if you are interested, please visit panel 16 at the back. <laughs> <clears throat> a special form of the native tomato forest is adding under the farm. They grow on extremely poor soil, usually characterized with very low pH. And as Adinanda Bulka will come in secondary forest, uh, secondary scrubs or land vegetation. Adinanda is a species, so they are dominated by the Adinanda and Mosa. Um, but those are only mostly restricted in the protected areas in nature reserves. The other Forests that we see throughout Singapore, they're actually mainly exotic dominated. They're mainly abandoned land uh, from previous agriculture, or they are wild land being cleared again and being invaded by exotic species. Um, the species can, can be, three canopy layer that observes are mainly dominated by exotic species. And in this sense, it kind of uh, falls into what um, hops nowadays call as the no way system, whereas a man made system dominated by a new combination of species that have not been observed before. So uh, based on um, two other students who were sent out to do this project, uh, Louis found them. And based on the plot studies, you can see that the total basal area from 55 plots and 45 plots in these two lands are, have a higher percentage or majority of land actually is uh, made of exotic species based on this area. But the common species are you know, quite, quite com comparatively less. So far, abandoned land, they are land abandoned from kampongs um, or village or yeah. and plantations mainly rubber. So the canopy will be mainly dominated by the remnant tree that's left over, that's untouched. So um, this is an example. This is, uh, I think, at the land door or upper Thompson, where you can see um, the house of the kampong still being left over or some toilet. Uh, and this is a typical rubber plantation. Uh, so, we do see that there's a distinct kampong and plantation category, but the distinction is always often uh, unclear. So, um, so from the kampong side, we do see things like Bhutan, durian, but on the other end, we do see like rubber and for things like uh, African tulip that are more for aesthetic purposes. Um, with the land that are cleared recently, usually after the 1960s, uh, were mainly dominated by exotic species like uh, Albizia, uh, the medium species. So this land invaded by the human uh, would be dominated or commonly seen plants would be the Elvisia, the Lucina, and the Acacia. And recently we have start seeing a lot of Sacropias coming out here and there in different forest ventures. So if you're interested again in advertisement, uh, you can attend this talk at 445 Dr. Chong, which he will talk about the Sacropia forest that he has been studying recently. So summary, uh, it's okay to classify the forest, secondary forest in Singapore based on land history. Yeah, so three main types, native dominated, abandoned land and waste land. How about coastal woodland? I mean, they are foristically similar from satellite images that, through my experience, it doesn't seem to be too different. But they are not really grown from previously killed land. They stay mostly on reclaimed land, so in some sense they have primary succession. And this is uh, at Coney Island. So you can see that these kind of forests are usually dominated by casual you know, enough. At the forefront of the beach, you do see sea hibiscus. And these kind of land are also susceptible to invasions by the exotic shrubs such as the Kamolina or the Rata. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so from here, and uh, 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 thanks Carmen who did your work on waste woodlands. Chao Kun and Hokkiong for the discussion on the classification of secondary forests uh, and the impacts permit for 
which allows me to enter different sites to look at different things. And the National Archives of Singapore for the 1945 program. Thank you.